Welcome to day two. This is the faux button neck warmer by the man who knits Paul Heaton, the DAC edition. In today's video, we are looking at design a knit and Paul's pattern. Okay, so we have set up for our necker from Paul Heaton. According to DAC, I need 26 by 26. So I'm going to sure my carriage is on. Tension six. Right across. Lower it down. Everything's knit. claw weights. Going to knit nine more rows. Break my yarn. Turn my machine to Mimo and install the garter carriage. Plugging in the garter carriage, set to circular, single direction circular, one row, tension nine. I'm now moving the garter carriage closer. Make sure it is on Mimo when you try to do a cast on. Make sure that your yarn is actually in the yarn holder. Putting on a clip, hoping for the best. Okay, I've stopped the garter carriage. I am now adding the edge markers so that two stitches only knit in stock and net, not purl. I am turning it off Mimo. I am then going to engage DAC. So now we must Figure out method of knitting. So we're going to start on the left, and that's okay. Make sure we're at the bottom. We're going to press go, and we're ready to go. All right, so our knitting machine needs to be set for garter. Multi-direction, we are now going to the right and we're going to knit nine rows. And we're going to knit nine rows and then we're going to mark for a button. Let's go. That is on the wrong row. We just reset it using the KRC button. 
and we're going to tell it to go again. We have a little knot. It'll be just fine. I'm going to come back to this when it is time to mark for the buttons. I don't want this video to be uh, 40 minutes long. Okay, Dak says I'm on row 4. My knitting machine says I'm on row 4. And my row counter says I am on row 4. That's a good thing. We are now at row number 9. And we are going to put a yarn marker at 18. Six. Six. And 18. We're going to make sure that there's a little clip on each of these yarn markers. We're the, we are then going to finish up with our garter and then we will start just a base built-in pattern that is in this machine that I use quite often called 552. So I'm going to press go on my garter carriage and it's going to knit nine more rows. I am going to place button marks on both ends of this project just in case I change my mind as to which one gets buttons. You can see how Dak is telling me I'm supposed to be on left 26 and right 26. I have a maximum of 365 rows. And I currently have 355 rows to go on my project. Okay, we are now at row 18. We're going to change it to single direction. As soon as the knitting has passed the end, I'm going to change the pattern. I'm also going to remove the yarn from the garter cord. Okay, changing the pattern, pressing step, canceling, 552, five, step, step, removing the yarn, lifting the garter carriage, moving it, beyond the left, back to the left. 
You can see how it changed to two again. KRC, move it back, you reset to row one. Bring your yarn back, change it to multi-direction. Multi change it back to you're going to the right. And then you're going to move your garter carriage a little closer. I need to knit 347 rows, so I'm going to make it 300 for now. And I'm going to let it knit on its own, unsupervised, for the next couple hours. You can see I set it for 300 rows. Go into the right, multi-direction, garter. I'm at row one of my new pattern, and it's knitting just fine. Okay, we have to switch patterns, so we are going to make the garter carriage go all the way that way. I'm going to stop it, remove my yarn, let it continue when it gets to the left well, right turn mark, I'm going to input the next pattern. Okay, so let's put in our next pattern. We're going to press step cancel nine zero one step step now the variation on this is that we want it to be the opposite way that we had the first rows so we're going to press flip so it's going to start at row 18 and work its way down to one now we need to bring the guard to carriage back so one 18 rows, come on back. Okay, I'm going to stop the garter carriage. Bring back the yarn. Make sure it's loose. And let it keep knitting. Just like before, I'm going to only let it knit eight, nine rows of garter or pattern number two which is actually pattern number one and then I will mark for the buttons again like I said I don't know for sure which one is going to be the lead still knitting it's gonna be a few minutes all right this is row nine And we're going to change it up a little bit. Okay. Instead of marking for buttons, we're going to do buttonholes instead. So I'm going to move 17 right. An 18 right to the outside of their um, stitches. So I'm moving stitch 6 onto stitch 7, stitch 5 onto stitch 4, and leaving that open. So stitch 5 onto 4, Stitch six on to seven. Stitch eighteen on to nineteen and seventeen on to sixteen. I am then going to let my garter carriage have a hairy cat fit and then I will fix it.
So how do we fix the hairy cat fit? Well, we can't have two needles not in work. So we do an E-wrap, put it on, move it back, grab this one, E-wrap, put it on, Move it back. And that's what you do. And that should prevent a big hole where you don't want a big hole, but it will still knit with the garter carriage. Make sure you move those back. One more time. So E wrap onto the needle butt. Well, needle head onto the needle head. Push them back. I guess for ease, I could just do that too. Onto the needle head. Onto the needle head. Okay, let it continue. As you can see, it really didn't care. And now we will finish knitting the uh, next eight rows of this piece, and then we're going to do something fun for the bind up. All right, we have two more rows to go, and then I'm going to do a different kind of bind up on this one. On the last one of these that we did, we decided. Well, I decided that I was going to hand sew it, and, and I did a, a um, really exaggerated latch tool to latch it off. Well, I decided just now that what I should do is attach this end to here and then bind it off. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm finding my end and I'm going to attach every single long loop onto every needle. Long loop, needle, long loop, needle. I'll come back when that's done. I got a better idea. Because stitches are supposed to be in sets of three, maybe I shouldn't do that. Because it should be one, two, three, one, two, three. So I'm going to leave that one and that one. One, two, three. Skip now one, two, skip one, two, skip. One, so I'm going to do a knit and a purl and then skip the next one. 
and then a purl and a knit and skip. I think that will make for a much better edge. I'll be back when that's done. Just so we're clear. Knit. Purl. Skip. Purl. Knit. Skip. Knit. Purl, skip, purl, knit, skip. Now I'm still going to do the exaggerated latch tool bind off. So everybody comes forward. into the loop all the way back. This should save me a whole lot of seaming. I'll come back when I'm done this part. Okay, I'm going to leave myself a generous tail just for the heck of it. Bring these all forward. I'm going to remove any weights that I still have on it. And I use my latch tool. I'll come back when this is done. Okay. Last couple here. So if I'm right, which I am, so when we look at this now, we have the finished seam and we have where the buttons are going to go. One, two, three, four, and it's way fluffier than the first one. And I think. I may just tack this over here just so that it lays the way I want it to. I will uh, finish sewing on the buttons and then I'll get back to you guys. You can see there is a dramatic difference between the DAC project and the old school project. Join me next time for yet another fun project using a knitting machine. Thanks for stopping by.